Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with David Floyer. We're with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's production of VMworld 2013. We're here in Moscone South. We're at the street level. Come on in and see us. We're in the lobby. Just look to the right. We've got a great location here. Thanks to the folks from VMware for setting us up. And uh, this is the spotlight on virtualization backup. It's a, it's a key topic. We don't hear enough about it. Everybody talks about backup and data protection sort of as an afterthought, but uh, it's something that David and I have been tracking for a number of years. Aman Singh is here, he's a senior enterprise storage and backup architect with Jive Software, a very good, cool company out of Palo Alto. Aman, welcome to theCUBE, thanks Thank for coming you. on. Thank you, thank you. So Pleasure. let's start with Jive. Jive is uh, doing some really interesting things. Tell us a little bit about Jive and, and, um, and what your role is. So um, what Jive does is it's basically a social collaboration business software and uh, we are spreading across the uh, across the lots of uh, large enterprise environments where the the uh, we're trying to see that how I mean we, we don't use email for our collaboration that's the main thing that uh, which will uh, take care of uh, many things from the collaboration perspective um, what I do is that um, so from the architecture perspective uh, from storage and backups, uh, I manage end-to-end uh, -end, uh, support and impl implementation. Yeah, so Jive started in the early days of social networking and kind of had that vision of bringing you know, that, that, that capability, that collaboration capability to, to enterprises. I think of my kids, and my kids don't use email, you just mentioned. Yeah. You know? Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, it's something that is. Yeah, you know, email would yeah. be like, after few years, no one would know what email is. <laughs> they were like, what is that? It's just a matter of time, isn't it? Exactly, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, the so way of the record. <laughs> yeah. So you look after you know the the, the storage. So maybe paint, can you paint a picture of your your environment you know generally, and we can drill into the storage piece of it. Sure. I mean uh, the way. So we have two aspects of the environment. One is the you could have a hosting side of the environment where you where customers come in and we can uh, host everything for them. And then there's the on-prem also. But more, most of the customers are coming into the hosted, uh, which is like a software as a service environment. And uh, from that perspective, all the back end is how we run everything in the cloud. So you look at Amazon, how you can use it as an infrastructure perspective. You can use your own software, but from Jive perspective, it's like you are running our software and on our infrastructure. And so that calls for redundancy, resiliency in the environment, and how things are done. If something goes happens in the primary data center, uh, what are the backend uh, data centers and how things are run. And also from the latency perspective, what things could be done uh, from overall perspective that uh, the customers have a, a very good value feedback uh, from the overall product perspective. So talk about the SLAs that you are sort of promising your customers um, from the standpoint of uh, how, how frequently you protect data and, and what happens if something goes wrong? So, it depends on, uh, on customer, uh, customers. Like, customers can buy uh, DR and they can also go to enhanced DR which the, where the RTOs and RPO times are much lower. And so it all depends on uh, what customer wants. So we can have uh, something running in the data centers which we can just flip things up and they can have something running in the backup data centers or it could be we can restore it for you in a couple of hours and then you can be up and running. So, so when we talk about, it depends on which level they choose and so exactly. forth, so when we talk about data protection as a service, you're doing that, you're yes. doing that today. Yes. So okay, so how, take us through how you're doing it. Yeah. So I would probably go a little, little bit back how we were doing it. Yes, um, so yeah, that's good. basically, uh, we were using storage level technologies to replicate the data across. Now, what happens is that w when a customer comes in and uh, he says that, okay, uh, I want a policy where I want to retain my data for one year. And uh, so we go back, we're like, okay, we can't do that. 
it's either for all the customers or it's for not all the customers. I mean, you have to keep a consistent policy across the board where you can uh, eat up space so fast. It's like, okay, now what do we do? So you're yeah, yeah. keeping backups for one year for everyone or you are keeping backups for three months for everyone, right? So you cannot <laughs> pick and choose. So so any, a one size there are no policy-based backups. Any, sir, fits any all service policy. level you want yeah. as long as it's blue. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's um, so with that, it's like there's no policy-based backup. You cannot have granular backups if you want to. And you cannot you cannot tweak the environment with, with what we had as of today. So that called for something more sophisticated and also uh, it also comes to money, that how much money we are spending month on monthly basis on, on that given architecture. Is it scaling well or not? Uh, so it was not scaling, we were spending a lot of money in it, and there was no granularity in the present backup infrastructure. So that's where it, we called for, okay, we need to re-architect this whole thing. Okay, and by re-architecting now, you're able to monetize it in new ways, yes? Not only provide better service and better customer satisfaction, but you're able to charge for different service levels, is that right? That is correct, and it's not just that. I mean, there were so many things that we could do with the present infrastructure is that, one is you can do have granular backups. The other thing is, um, everyone talks about D2 technologies out in the world, mm. but so when you're running so from a storage architecture perspective is that I don't want to run uh, a dedupe on a production system where I want to save space, right? It's like, okay, I want to get that dedupe out of the production system where I can do uh, all the dedupe from the back end, my backups do all the dedupes. And now the dedupes, uh, uh, what Data Domain offers or Avamar offers, uh, basically going with Sysl algorithms and uh, uh, a variable block uh, dedupes, mm. they are like much more higher than what a, a given production system can do today. So, you save a lot of space, and if you talk about dedupe, they can give you around about 40x dedupe on your data, which is like you can run a given system today for next five years and not spend a dime on it. It's just a management, even the management cost goes down because it's a centralized console where you can manage everything overall. So that's and been a huge cost avoidance for you. So huge cost avoidance, mm -hmm. yeah. So I so can, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I cannot give you a number, but it's something huge, <laughs> yes. So you I, can you can get to, how do you get to specific problems? So somebody has you know, corrupted a copy of something or other from a week ago. Can you get, uh, come bring back a specific uh, yes. copy of a, Persons, That's uh, the beauty of it, yes. Right. You can go into that this system, uh, the present infrastructure uh, architecture, click on it and say, okay, this is what exactly what. Even, it's not even if you talk about VMs, right? Even you can dig into the VMs and say, okay, this is the file I, that, that I need. And you, it, it has happened so many times in our present infrastructure, it's like, okay, we need this file. Okay, look, I cannot give you this file. I have to give you this whole blob where you go ahead, find from it. And the restore process is uh, um, presently, um, or what we were doing previously, it's, uh, it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Takes so many, so much time. Since our in, in, in environment is there are like so many millions of files, so taking a backup and restoring that in a present infrastructure is very hard. With the newer architecture, it's like once you do a, a level zero backup, after that it's a breeze. Could, it's just could you describe that new architecture a little bit more? What, what are the what are the things you're using within that? How how are you uh, organizing? That? So one th one thing is uh, uh, I mean it, it's a disk to disk backup. Uh, the thing is um, uh, going with uh, data domain Elmar, it fits into the present virtual infrastructure where you have proxies running, which which are the brains for all the software. So it knows what has been backed up, and the data domain takes care of all the dedupes and everything. And LMR side takes care of, okay, what I'm backing up, should I be backing up this again, right? How much data I'm going to send across. So it takes care of everything. And it also, so it, since uh, we are like 99% virtualized, so it just fits in. Uh, you bring up the proxies and um, you create the policies that this is how I want to run it. You uh, create the, uh, uh, the, when you want to run it and how, how long you want to retain it. And after that, 
it's just a breeze. So, so Avamar has the brains and, and Data Domain is providing the brawn. Is that yes. the, the so allocation right. of resources across that Yes, and, the, and, and uh, the other thing is, and this thing is that you can replicate these uh, uh, data domains into another site and they can do a, a, a bi-directional replication back to the original site also. So you can actually run production in two different sites and not worry about backups. And the other thing is that, one is that you, you have a local copy in your local data center and the source are like way faster than what we do today. Because we have to pull a, da a data today from an offsite location because that's through the SOC 2 compliance that you have to have an offsite location. So uh, uh, did you architect this? Uh, yes. Was it, this is somewhat unique. Um, from other stories that we've heard, David, yeah. right? Yes, um, it is. I mean, it's, uh, so you've, got, you've got a tremendous amount of flexibility uh, between, well, where's the second site? How far away is that? Well, so we have a couple of data centers, so each, each site depends on what the backup site is. So we have a uh, few sites in the US, we, have, we are in Amsterdam, we are in Singapore, so it all depends on what is sitting where, and we can set up uh, directional, bi-directional application, however we need it. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, doing that, okay, this is what would be my replicator site, this would what would be my primary site, and you can pick and choose. So why, why, um, why EMC? Talk about that a little bit. Okay, so um, one thing is that, actually this is the second time I am architecting the solution uh, uh, with data domain. And previously, uh, in my previous company, we actually were using a third party software, uh, net backup with data domain. Uh, since LMR has come a long way from what it was providing in earlier years, and there was not much, uh, I wouldn't say confidence in it, but it was not there from the enterprise perspective. We never went that route. Now from the EMC perspective, since uh, LMR is part of the EMC now, one thing is, if something comes bundled from a given, uh, given vendor, it becomes much more easier for the support perspective. Let's say as of today, if I am having an issue, even from from the uh, VMware perspective, if I'm having an issue, it's so easy to get the resources on a single call that here, hey, this is an issue, they all work together. Otherwise, it's always, you know, it's a finger pointing, <laughs> right? It's not my issue, yeah. it's your issue, right? And then they come back, it, it becomes a nightmare. It's just like, uh, so biggest thing, it's single vendor solution, works perfectly and it does what I need it to do. I mean, that's uh, We just did a survey, um, on, and one of the questions we asked is, are you, it, was a, it was around virtualization, it was around multi-hypervisors. We asked, are you willing to trade the risk of lock-in for simplicity? And about half the survey said yes. And, and the mo most, uh, there wasn't any, any other response that was that close. You know, some wanted to open, some wanted you know, lower cost, whatever it was, but is that a fair, um, 60%, uh, characterization mm -hmm. of your attitude toward working with vendors, vendor management. Are you willing to trade the, the, the risk, or were you willing to risk potential lock-in to get simplicity and, and service from a single vendor? I would definitely do that. I mean, the, th the thing is, I mean, when you are in the enterprise environments, vendor management is a big thing. Uh, it, uh, everything comes and falls down to it's kind of a backbone, the whole, the whole right. thing. And if you can uh, get to a point where it's uh, it's so simple to get support, so simple to yeah. support the whole thing, it's just like. Yeah, I mean, so this, it's, just, it's a conversation we have a lot in the cube, because every vendor says we're not going to lock you in, we're not going to lock you in, but there's always some degree you know, of, of lock-in risk. There, yeah. and so as, yeah. a, as a buyer, you have to be cognizant of that. Um, and if, that in and of itself is not a reason not to do business with somebody. It's something that you have to evaluate in your spectrum of decision making, isn't Correct. it? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. How about advice for practitioners that you'd give that are you know, facing some similar challenges that, that maybe you faced? What would you say is the most important thing that, that you did, or if you had to do it over again, you'd do differently? Uh, so, I mean, when we started with this, uh, we did a POC, with with the all the big units uh, in our in production data centers, and uh, so the main advice is that I mean the biggest thing is know your environment, right? What what you really want uh, out of your environment and what needs to be done, uh, and uh, and the and if if you present that to your management or 
whoever you want to show it that, okay, this is what it is today, this is what we will be getting to, right? And this is what we will be saving, and this is, and do we do I need another person to do that? No, everyone is scared of backups. You talk about a backup today, the first thing you come into your mind is like, oh shit, <laughs> yeah. is, is it there? And then you're like, <laughs> change it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always like that. It's like, so you want to get away from that mindset. Okay, like someone, uh, so for me, it's like I can create uh, policies in a, in a given environment and say like, okay, it, here are the read-only policies. If someone needs a backup, go ahead here, and this is the how to do it, and do it yourself, right? I don't even need to look at it once I have set it up. Yeah, one job fails, I can go ahead and take a look at it, but I don't need to babysit the environment. That's, I mean, you want to get away from that. I mean, you, I mean babysitting the environment is not, yeah. it's not that we have a lot of time in our hands, yeah, right? Other stuff it's to do. always uh, something or else going on, so, yeah. Uh, excellent. All right, Amon, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, and All thank right. you, David, for uh, sharing the spotlight here with me. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from VMworld 2013. Okay.